If you happen to see it, I previously published a video on the topic of whether printing from JPEGs causes any visible loss of print quality. That video is also a chapter in the Producing Better Prints course that I collaborated on with my Photocascadia teammate Zach Schneff. In this new video, I have a correction, some more information, and some modified recommendations. Both Zach and I have printed from JPEGs when necessary for 15 years, and we've conducted screen tests and print tests over the years. Printing JPEGs has never caused a concerning loss of quality that we were aware of, including in the extreme tests that I conducted in that previous video. Based on our experience, as well as confirmation from multiple authoritative resources, such as the book, The Digital Print, our recommendation was to print from 16-bit TIFF files if you can, but if you're forced to print from an 8-bit TIFF or a JPEG, these options would provide just as good quality if no additional adjustments were made to the image. Since then, a handful of people have written to let us know that they are pretty sure they've experienced quality differences when printing from JPEGs. Determined to see if I could verify this, I conducted some additional tests. I wasn't finding any issues until I came to this image, which has very bright, saturated colors and large areas that smoothly fade from one side of the color spectrum to the other. Apparently, this is the perfect storm of characteristics needed because I was finally able to generate meaningful color banding in both JPEGs and 8-bit TIFFs. So, it is possible for JPEGs to cause a loss of quality after all. Let me share my findings with you. This version of the image is a 16-bit TIFF file in the Profoto color space, so it has high bit depth, the largest color space, and a lossless file type. This is what I would normally print on my own printer. I use this file to create a few copies and save them with different bit depths, file types, and color spaces for comparison, including a Profoto RGB 8-bit TIFF, an Adobe RGB 8-bit TIFF, a Profoto RGB JPEG, an Adobe RGB JPEG, and an sRGB JPEG. I printed 12 by 18 test prints of all of them and compared them side by side. It'd be best if you could view the actual prints like I am, but I don't think the prints will show you the differences in a video. However, all the differences that are visible in the prints are also visible on my monitor, so I'm going to show you that instead. Even still, you may not be able to completely tell what's actually in the image and what's being caused by video compression, so be aware of that. The main problem that I found is color banding. I've ranked the results from best to worst. So this is the 16-bit Profoto TIFF, and as you would expect, it is the best of the bunch with no color banding that I can see on screen or in the print. Next come the two 8-bit TIFF files. This one is still in Profoto, and this one was converted to Adobe RGB. They match each other, but they aren't quite as good as the 16-bit TIFF file. Both have very faint banding, which I can only see at 200% magnification or higher on my monitor, and I don't think I can see any banding in the 12 by 18 prints, but someone with better vision might be able to. Now onto the JPEGs. While I didn't see that color space made a difference in the 8-bit TIFF files in terms of banding, color space does make a difference in the JPEGs. The Adobe RGB JPEG has the least banding of the JPEG tests, but more banding than the 8-bit TIFFs. Banding is visible at 100% on the screen, but it's nearly imperceptible if I go down to 50%. It's hard to see in the 12 by 18 prints, but if I look really closely, it's definitely there. The sRGB JPEG comes in next. It has more banding than the Adobe RGB JPEG, but less banding than the Profoto JPEG. Banding is easily visible both on screen and in a 12 by 18 test print. It also has the added downside that the brightest colors have been shifted quite a bit to fit the sRGB color space. So color reproduction here is the worst. The Profoto JPEG is at the bottom of the list and has the most banding of all the tests. 
The banding is even more visible than the sRGB JPEG, I think because with such a large color space, more color steps must be compressed into the lower bit depth and JPEG algorithm. However, unlike the sRGB JPEG, all the colors have at least been retained. So that's a wide range of results, but remember that this image is somewhat of an outlier with just the right characteristics needed to produce color banding. Many other images that I tested showed no visible banding or such faint banding that I would not be able to notice unless it was being compared directly side by side. For example, this is a 16-bit Profoto TIFF and this is a Profoto JPEG. So we're comparing the best banding situation with the worst banding situation. But images such as this that have a lot of detail and also lack areas of smooth color gradients don't show any differences that I can tell. So we don't need to look at more images like this one. Instead, let's look at more images with smooth gradients, but perhaps not quite such extreme colors to see if we can find where the limits are. In this image, just the very darkest areas have a slight amount of banding that I can see in the Profoto JPEG and essentially no banding that I can see in the Adobe RGB JPEG. And finally, this image does show some banding in the Profoto RGB JPEG, very, very faint banding in the Adobe RGB JPEG, and the 8-bit TIFF files look great. So based on what I'm seeing, here are my revised recommendations. It turns out that when you have the right image characteristics, JPEGs and even 8-bit TIFFs can generate visible color banding that you wouldn't get in a 16-bit file. So to be safe, print from 16-bit TIFF files if you can, and that was already our suggestion anyway. But if you can't print 16-bit for some reason, your next best option is an 8-bit TIFF and the color space doesn't seem to matter. In most cases, they're visually the same as 16-bit and in extreme cases, they can show some very slight banding. Your last option is a JPEG in the Adobe RGB color space. In images with lots of detail and without smooth color gradients, they seem to be just as good as 16-bit. With smooth color gradients, they can vary from pretty good to not great. I would avoid printing Profoto RGB or sRGB JPEGs if at all possible. JPEGs in these color spaces seem to have the highest chance of showing banding and they do not save any file size. Additionally, sRGB JPEGs will probably shift some of your colors. And as always, don't just take my word for it. If you do not have the option to print from a 16-bit file, I recommend doing your own assessment to see how the particular image will print as an 8-bit TIFF or a JPEG before giving up. There's a good chance there won't be any banding or the banding will be so faint that you find it acceptable. To check for yourself, do all your soft proofing, sizing, sharpening, and color space converting in 16-bit and then save or export, in the case of Lightroom, a copy as an 8-bit TIFF and or a JPEG and evaluate those on your monitor, and you can also print smaller test prints to evaluate. If you're not able to pick up any banding and the image overall looks great to you, then I say why not print it? So I hope this has provided additional useful information about if and when to print from 8-bit files and helps you create prints that look great. As always, thanks for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.